the basic concepts underlying one and two-point perspective really can't be understated. The, the sheer simplicity of the idea that when you, when you take a series of really simple basic steps and you pile them on top of each other, one after the other, it allows you to arrive at an unbelievable level of sophistication and complexity. Uh, perspective, what it does is it, it establishes a framework for communicating visual information and it, it does it accurately. And just nothing else really compares to it. It's a, a solution to basic sort of spatial drawing problems that, that literally took like 50,000 years for people to figure out. Drawing has been around for a very, for that long that we know about. And if you look at drawing before 1425, when one and two point perspective sort of come out, as soon as the idea gets sort of put out into the public where all the other artists in the world get a chance to play around with it. Uh, it, was, it was first put out by uh, Lorenzo Ghiberti in the, the door of the baptistry of the big uh, Duomo in uh, Florence in 1425. And as soon as that happens, within a couple of years, the entire, like everybody in the art world knows about it and it just absolutely revolutionizes uh, painting and drawing and, and architecture and, and, and everything else. And I, there's, there's a lot of really interesting things to talk about with perspective. And I, I, this is just an intro. I don't, I don't want to get too carried away here. But I just wanted to show some examples while I was doing the little intro of a few different drawings. And, and you can see that perspective drawing is, is used for all sorts of outcomes. Um, really, it, it, perspective doesn't just apply to buildings and boxes. It applies literally to everything that's in space. And since everything is in space, perspective applies to everything. And, you know, sometimes the results can be relatively static, a little bit boring. They can be super accurate. Uh, they can be kind of descriptive. But then they can also be, like, just wildly fantastic. And someone like uh, M.C. Escher is a great example of that. All of his work is, is uh, steeped in the basics of perspective. And, and then he, he likes to play around with, with how to break those rules and bend them. And it's just, uh, he's, a, he's a really fun artist to, to take a deeper look at. And, and the last one I was going to show is, uh, is by Vincent van Gogh, who every, everyone kind of knows he has the reputation of being kind of a wild man and an expressionist, but it's, it's useful to remember that behind all of that surface uh, sort of passion, uh, his work starts with a, a really thorough understanding of the mechanics of perspective. And this little drawing of a, a drawbridge is an excellent example. It's, it's got his handwriting. It's, it's just a really wonderfully expressive drawing, but it's absolutely perfectly accurate when it comes to the subject matter itself and conveying it clearly to the viewer. From here, we're going to switch over to the demonstration part of the video where we're just going to take a few minutes and look at the mechanics of how perspective drawing works. So we're talking about one-point perspective. So one-point perspective is one of the sort of fundamental building blocks of drawing. And this video is just going to be about keeping it simple and just laying out the mechanics and some of the big ideas. So when you're doing one-point perspective, you have a couple key things, and one of them is this line here, which we're going to refer to as the horizon line. And you'll also hear me talk about it, uh, calling it your eye level. 
Now, it's important to remember that your eye level, if you're trying to be basically realistic about it, it's always going to be a, a horizontal. You'll see in some artwork and illustration where the horizon actually tilts a little bit. Don't worry about that right now. The horizon is the height of your eyes. It's, it's not what your eyes are looking at. It's the direction your eyes are looking and the height. So just like what it sounds like, the horizon. If you're in a room and you're trying to figure out where your, your, your eye level is, you look out towards the horizon. I know you won't be able to see it because there's going to be a wall there. But it'll, it'll be a mark on the wall or something like that. But we're going to use it because it turns out that if you stand in between two parallel lines, like if you're standing in the middle of a highway that's going straight or railroad tracks, parallel lines, as they recede away, they converge on a point. So that's what's, that's what's going on here. I'm setting it up. So the first term is our horizon. The second term is our vanishing point. In one point perspective, there's only one vanishing point. We don't have to worry about it aside from that. And if we're drawing in one point perspective, what we're going to have to observe first is that the box that we're drawing, its front plane faces us. It's not turned like this. It's not turned away from us. It's flat towards us. And the parallel lines that make up a box here are just vertical and horizontal. There's nothing to that. But the parallel lines that move away from us, that's where things get tricky. And one point perspective simplifies it. So if we just go from the front corner to the vanishing point and draw those lines all the way out and then cut it off, That's going to be our one-point perspective box. Now, in this scenario, we can only see two sides of a six-sided cube. But uh, if, if, if the box is a little bit further to our right or to our left, then we'll be able to see three planes. But uh, while I'm doing that, I'll, I'll talk about some other stuff. So the reason that perspective drawing is just like bedrock foundation for drawing is because it establishes the importance in a mechanical sense of a single point of view for the picture that you're trying to draw. It's, and that point of view is shared by the artist and the viewer. So if you're making this drawing, the person looking at it is relating to the drawing as far as where the horizon is and where your vanishing points are. So if we draw our lines out again, make sure they all go to the same place. Now, if you have multiple one-point perspective boxes, and you know that they're all one-point perspective, and essentially like this line, and this line, and this line, and this line, and this line, they're all parallel to each other. They all share the same point. So try not to let that get confusing. What could be simpler? There's only one point. Just have all your lines go to it. So now if we draw a box above the horizon, the rules are the same. They're just upside down. So 
all your lines that are going back in space, they just go to that point. Keeping it simple, cut it off. All right, so that's pretty clear. And then the last thing is if you have a box that straddles the horizon, it's pretty easy. You just draw that front plane and then do the same thing. Send those lines back. Cut it off. And then clean it up a little bit. And we can erase. That looks like that line's not quite horizontal. A little better. Okay. So now the, the next step, if you're just totally getting this and you're really nailing this, the next step that will deepen this for you is to make the boxes transparent from where they are. So like we talked about before, you can only see two planes here, but you know there's six. So we want to find a way to draw all six from the same view viewpoint. So the way that we do that, uh, and there's a lot of utility in learning how to draw boxes transparently. So it's not too complicated to go into it in the first 10 minutes or so. So we go from the front corner back to the vanishing point on both sides. And then we take that back corner on both, we drop it straight down. Make sure it's parallel with this line. Drop it straight down. Okay, and if you did it right, where these lines intersect should be at the same height. Okay, and the other thing that happens, let me just strengthen this, strengthen the lines that would be the visual ones, the ones that you would see to help this box make a little bit more sense. When things get complicated, there's lines going everywhere. You have to prioritize by line weight which ones you want the viewer to understand as being closer. In a general sense, you can kind of say that the lines that are uh, closer to you can be a little bit darker. But what happens is our eye level is here. If you're, as, you're, as, as you're looking down at things, we know that this top plane and this bottom plane, we know they're the same size and shape. But since this one is closer to your eye level, it's going to be a little bit smaller than this one. So as things that are the same size get closer to your eye level, they get skinnier. And as they move further away from your eye level, they get bigger. So one way to know that you've done this right is the top plane is thinner than the bottom plane. And if the transparency thing does not work out, it just means there's something wrong with your, uh, your box to, to begin with. So when, if you're in my class and you're watching this video, 
I usually, what I have you do is just do three boxes below the horizon, three above, and then one or two that straddle the horizon, and just practice doing that. When you get those in, you can make them transparent. And the last thing I wanted to point out is, one of the things you might have noticed is that every time I had a parallel set of lines that were moving back in space, I always drew them all the way to the vanishing point. And that's a habit you want to get into. Always draw your lines out. The mistakes you're going to make are going to come from you not drawing your lines out. And that's, as soon as we start looking at people's drawings, you're going to hear me say that over and over and over again. Draw your lines out. It's going to eliminate a lot of problems. Because this is relatively simple right now. And even if this got a little complex, it's still very simple compared to the things we'll be doing later. And the more complicated things get, the more lines there are going to be everywhere, and you're going to get confused. When you have lines going back to the vanishing point that you know are right, and you're trying to be consistent with, that example is already there for you. You're way more likely to follow that and be consistent and get it right. If you don't do that, you're just going to have crazy lines all over the place. And if you don't draw your lines out, well, you'll see what I mean soon enough. So you can start on that. And when I come back, we'll start on two-point perspective. Two-point perspective. So you can see my horizon line here. And two-point perspective, instead of with one point, what we end up with is a, a box whose front plane faces us. Two-point perspective is going to be where the front one, one corner is closer to us than another. So that's our front corner. Maybe I'll draw it a little bit lower. So that's our front corner. That's our horizon. And remember, your horizon is where your eyes are in space, the height of your eyes, not where you're looking. Because you might be looking down or up or whatever. It has to do with your height. You might be sitting, you might be standing, you might be laying down. Those are all variations. But um, So two-point perspective is we're going to have two vanishing points instead of one. So from the front corner, we would look at the box that we're trying to draw and then we would uh, take, take, take that angle. We're making it up right now. And if I didn't say that before, I should have. We're just going through these things mechanically. So we're just making boxes up. They don't have to be based on a real still life that's in front of us. But our vanishing points in two-point perspective, usually the mistake people make is they, they have their vanishing points too close. And vanishing points need to be relatively far away. So. I'm just going to pick an angle here. I need one that's close so that it's at least on the page. Let's see? Right there. Okay, so I'm going to use that as my vanishing point on the right. And that's close. So my other one is going to go off the page. And I know that that's confusing. For people a lot of the time, but that's just how it is. I don't make the rules. I just follow them and then try to make art inside that rule set. Okay, so that's going to be the right-hand side of the box. And then if this is our close vanishing point, our far vanishing point, like if we measure how far over that is, it needs to be further away than that. So I'm just going to have it be off the page. And that's a good way to think about it because under normal circumstances, if you have one vanishing point on the page, the other one is really, really far away. So that's going to be good. And now if we just make sure that That line keeps going. So now we, can, we don't 100% know whether or not these are going to meet on the horizon. 
but if your vanishing point is off the page, you need to make sure that these lines are converging on each other, that they're converging on a point, and that it's reasonable that they would get there. If we had a ruler or something really far, you know, that will go further or a really long piece of paper, we can make sure that it works. Um, when you practice this, for the purposes of being consistent, you might want to have both points on the page. I don't like to do that because it, they always end up being too close and then they end up distorted. So as long as the distance between them is getting smaller as they move across the page, you know you're, you're, you're on the right side of things. So we have the right side, we have the left side. Now we cut it off wherever we want. You see, this will be, if it's a cube, this will be a shorter side because it's angled more, okay? So we got that. And now what we do, and this is where people have trouble, you have to be consistent about this. You go from this corner to that vanishing point and from that corner to that vanishing point. So be consistent. Make sure your lines are basically straight. Use a ruler if you need to. And this one, I'm going to the same place as these lines. My lines as they go to the left, they tend to warp and curve a little bit. And that's because the angle of the camera combined with me needing to draw like around the camera. Uh, the camera is where I want to be and I can't be there. So that's something we got to watch out for. You may see a little distortion in these lines as they go to the left, but basically they're, they're not too far off. So that's it. Two point perspective. So we started with the front corner and you know, I've been going through this perspective thing mechanically with you and doing things in a very specific order. And the order that you go through for these is really important. Always start with the front corner. Pretty much no matter what. If you start with the front corner, you've got a shot at getting it right. If you try to draw this box from here, you are not going to, it's not going to go well. You're going to screw it up somehow. If you start with the front corner and work your way back, look at those angles, you're going to be okay. So the rules are the same above the horizon. I'm not going to do that here. Um, they're the same. Now, if you have a bunch of boxes that are lined up, they're going to share the same points. But if you have boxes that are not lined up, they're going to have their own points. And that's where two-point perspective gets insanely complicated very quickly. So if we go and set up a new box, and one of its vanishing points, well, let's say this is going to be where it's going to be. It's going to be right here. So that's going to be our first vanishing point extremely close to us. All right, so that's our one side. And now if this is this close, this has to be an even lower angle than this. So we might end up with something like that. It has to angle up. If it's horizontal, it's one point perspective. So make sure it angles up and make sure that this one angles up slightly more. Let's see. And the way we check, as long as it's getting smaller as it moves across, that's right. All right, so now we cut it off wherever we want. And 
And now we go from here and here, we just crisscross them. This is gonna be kind of tight. The closer you get to your eye level, the less room you have to maneuver, so it's a good idea to draw things down low. I don't have a lot of room because of the camera, so I'm keeping mine a little bit closer to the horizon than you want. Always draw your lines all the way out. Like I said in the last part, that's one of the ways that we know the relationships between some of the different angles. If I just draw this line and draw this line, how am I supposed to know? If I don't draw them all the way out and see how they recede, how am I supposed to know whether or not they're receding? It's really important that we know that. All right, so there's another box. Looks pretty good. Nice and reasonable. And it has its own points. Strengthen it a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go back to this one and draw it transparently just to show you that in two-point perspective. So it's, it's, a, it's the same idea, but the, obviously the lines are coming from different places. So um, going from here to the vanishing point, and I can use the line that's here, here, and here. I can use that and make sure that it looks like, use this one. Go from here, you're, you're going right past it, Make sure that it looks like it's converging with this line. Because if we bring this out, it should be getting bigger and further apart between these two. Use that to go all the way back. Use it to stay consistent. Same thing here. Use these lines. We're going from here to that vanishing point. While I'm drawing these lines, I'm looking at this line, I'm looking at this line, making sure that I'm staying in between them and that that angle makes sense. And if I do it right, this point and this point should be directly below each other, or above and below. And that's pretty good, only a tiny bit off, so I can make that adjustment without much trouble. All right, so you can see that the two-point perspective box here, now it's, now it's transparent. You can see all six sides, even though only three are visible. And two-point perspective, sort of by definition, you're always going to get the three visible planes. And that's going to be a really important idea as we progress through the, uh, through the class. So again, give me three looking down, three looking up, all of them have different vanishing points. The only scenario where two-point perspective boxes are gonna share a vanishing point is like if, if they're lined up. Like for instance, if you had like a chessboard and you have all the squares are oriented at an angle, but all their angles are going to the same places. That's the only scenario where that would happen. So I'm going to continue drawing while the video kind of plays out and I'm not going to continue the voiceover. I'm just going to play for a little bit and see what, uh, see what happens with this drawing.